Greetings and salutations, pilots. This is a Kirishin, and in this video I will be featuring the ME-329 ground attack aircraft uh, made by Messerschmitt. It is a German uh, plane. Its armaments are four 30 millimeter cannons that do 200 damage per second with a, I would say, low rate of fire of 240 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 616 meters, which is a, is a medium effective firing range. Uh, the aircraft is also equipped with a 20 millimeter machine gun turret, which is very powerful. Uh, it does 144 damage per second with an effective firing range of 900 meters. That's a pretty uh, long effective firing range. Uh, its field of fire is 60 meters. Its gun elevation also 60. And gun depression minus 45. The aircraft is also equipped with two uh, bombs that do 5,000 damage each within a 75 meter damage radius. This aircraft has good survivability. It is resistant to critical damage and fire. To accentuate that strength, I have equipped as an upgrade improved covering three which decreases the chance of, a, of critical damage to wings and tail by 20% and also increases the ME-329's hit points by 5%. Now, uh, many times we are under attack by enemy AA defenses as well as defensive gunfire from other ground attack aircrafts that we may come into contact with uh, and need to defend against. Therefore, I have equipped Concealing Livery 3, which reduces the efficiency of enemy AA uh, emplacements and the defensive gunfire of other aircraft by 30%. To augment this aircraft's strong rear gun, I have equipped Turret Stabilization 3, which increases the, the rear gun's effective firing range by 15%. In terms of pilot skills, I have equipped Protection Expert, uh, which increases the effect of improved covering and our concealing livery by 40%. So two of our primary upgrades are augmented by Protection Expert. This is a relatively slow aircraft, so I have decided to equip it with Engine Guru 1, which increases engine thrust by 3%, just to give us a little bit more oomph. Also, something that I think is kind of a must for this aircraft is Demolition Expert, which increases damage caused by bombs and rockets and their blast radius by 15%. That will help to make the two bombs that this aircraft is equipped with more powerful and effective. In terms of our gunner, I have uh, chosen the armorer skill, which increases the burst length of a turret by 20%, as well as ballistics expert, which increases the firing range of our turret by 15%, and the effect of turret stabilization by 20%. So this skill augments our third 
upgrade. So all of our upgrades that we have on this aircraft have been augmented by our uh, choices in our pilot and in our gunner. Now, uh, if I had the skill points, I would also choose precision gunner um, so that the gunner concentrates on the most vulnerable sections of enemy aircraft. That would be nice to have, but alas, we do not have those skill points as yet. Looking at this aircraft specifications, get these all expanded here. Its optimum altitude is 950 meters. I can tell you that most times I am hugging the treetops, maybe even the bushes. Uh, its stall speed is 130 kilometers per hour, which is not too bad. So you can, you know, uh, you want to be able to approach many of these ground targets slowly because you're a lot of times you're using the cannons. And so you need some time to be able to uh, put those cannon rounds on the targets to hopefully take out an entire section of ground uh, rather than just uh, components of the ground sections. Uh, average time to turn 360 degrees is 17 seconds. So this aircraft is not maneuverable, of course. Um, its top speed at best altitude is 650 kilometers per hour. In terms of our ammunition, I have equipped universal ammunition, which has uh, uh, twice the chance of critical damage as it does chance of fire. A uh, chance of fire, though, is important, I think, because as you you know, we'll probably see when we get in the PVP, many times it is the fire that you leave on the ground target that then uh, takes that target out once you have passed it. So I think it is useful to have uh, a chance of fire. In terms of consumables, I have gone with the first aid kit to get our pilot back in shape or, or our rear gunner um, if need be, because you know obviously if a fighter or something gets behind our aircraft and is shooting at us, it's the gunner who may take it on the chin. Um, so it's nice to be able to get that gunner back in action. Yeah. Uh, also, um, as many times we are flying at the tree tops as I as I've mentioned and the last thing you want to do when you're flying at the tree tops is have your engine knocked out if you're you know higher altitude then you may have time to recover from that but if you're you know down with the uh, the bees <laughs> then you don't have time to restart an engine so having that engine automatic engine restarter is, is very useful and of course, I have gone with uh, weapons cooling, which I think is an absolute must for this aircraft. You only have two bombs, so a lot of the times you're using the powerful cannons of this aircraft to destroy ground targets or sometimes even, you know, other aircraft. Um, so having that weapons cooling uh, consumable keeps you firing at the targets. Uh, I've gone with gold consumables on these. Uh, so they each have a 60 second cooldown and are uh, at least the uh, engine restarter and the first aid kit are activated automatically. You don't have to think about it. Um, the weapons cooling skill is activated manually. It's at a time of your choosing. The non-gold version of the auto, of these consumables has a 90 second cooldown and as to automatic engine restarter and first aid kit the non-gold versions of those must be activated manually so it's something you have to you know pay, pay attention to 
Uh, personally, I like to, you know, concentrate on flying the aircraft, uh, aiming my weapons, uh, situational awareness uh, in regards to other aircraft. So it's nice not to have to think about those two consumables, that they just happen automatically. All right, looking at uh, paint schemes, uh, this is the summer paint scheme. This is a winter. Desert. And it looks like the marine is selected incorrectly. Probably got accidentally changed. Uh, and that's marine. So I always enjoy the German paint schemes. Um, man, if we could get some of the German paint schemes like this, I love the small patterns here. If we could get those on the American planes and other, you know, uh, countries' aircraft, that would be fantastic. The Germans just had terrific paint schemes. It's a small thing, I know, but it's it's always nice to enjoy what you're looking at uh, as you're playing the game. All right, so what we are going to do now uh, is head over to World of Warplanes website and uh, compare this Tier 8 ground attack aircraft to other Tier 8 uh, peers. So we are here on World of Warplanes website using their handy dandy uh, compare aircraft tool, uh, which is something really nice that uh, Wargaming provides to us. And uh, what we're going to do is compare these Tier 8 ground attack aircraft to our Messerschmitt ME 329. Uh, and there are not a lot of choices currently in the game. Uh, we There is only the uh, Ilyushin IL-10M, which is a premium aircraft, and the Ilyushin IL-20. So uh, let's get into this here, looking at gun armaments first. Uh, the... ME329 uh, is uh, slightly superior to the IL-10M. However, the IL-20 is indicated as being significantly uh, superior to the ME329. So let's look at that a little bit more in depth. We'll look at the uh, IL-10M first, and the IL-10M has four 23 millimeter uh, cannons, which do 170 damage per second. The, in contrast, the Messerschmitt ME329 has four 30 millimeter cannons that do 200 damage per second. Uh, now the 23 millimeters on the IL-10M uh, do have essentially twice the rate of fire uh, as the ME-329 uh, and also have a almost a 200 meter uh, effective firing range above and beyond that which the ME329 has. So, you know, you can you can certainly argue uh, which cannons are better, uh, but if your primary objective is attacking ground targets, then the higher caliber cannons of the ME329 are more effective in that regard. Looking at the gun armaments of the IL-20, 
it has two 57 millimeter cannons that do 500 damage per second. Uh, however, they have a very, very low rate of fire of only 75 rounds per minute versus the 240 rounds per minute with regard to the ME329's cannons. Uh, but having said that, the firing range of those 57 millimeter cannons is 1200 meters. That's huge, huge. So you can actually start firing at whatever the ground target is that you want to take out um, almost 600 meters sooner uh, with the IL-20 than you can with the ME-329. So, you know, it's a give and a take. Um, so it's a give and take. Um, and you just have to decide what, you know, is more important. Going back here to bombs and rockets. The ME-329 is said to be inferior to the uh, IL-20, but slightly superior to the IL-10M. So again, let's look into the specifics of that. So the ME-329 only has two bombs. Um, and those bombs each do 5,000 damage uh, in a 75 meter radius. The IL-10M has four bombs, but they only do 2,800 damage each in a 60 meter radius. So, I mean, if you collectively, uh, the four bombs are going to do more damage than the two bombs on the ME-329. So, you know, one could argue which is better. Um, but also the IL-10M has rockets, which do 1,200 damage each and, you know, in a 45 meter radius. So, and, and there are four of those. So I think you could make an argument that the IL-10M's uh, bombs and rockets are actually better than just the bombs of the ME-329. I think there's a reasonable argument to be made there that the stat doesn't tell the whole story. Uh, looking at the IL-20, you will see that it has uh, better bombs than the ME-329. Uh, 7,000 damage in a 90 meter radius of damage um, and there are two of those so right off the bat um, the bombs there are clearly superior to those of the ME-329. Add to that the fact that the IL-20 has 12 rockets, each of which do 1,300 damage in a 45 meter radius. And folks, it's not even really a competition. The IL-20 um, is just a better ground attack aircraft, uh, it, it would seem. I don't know what other, what other conclusion you could reach there. All right, uh, moving on. 
in terms of hit points. Uh, the IL-10M uh, has less hit, hit points than the ME329, whereas the IL-20 has greater hit points than the ME329. So, so far, folks, um, pretty clear here, we kind of have a winner. If you're looking at, you know, the ground attack role here, the IL-20 is just so far outclassing the ME-329. Um, the the uh, ME-329 does have greater airspeed than either the IL-10M or the IL-20. But, you know, I mean, really, how important is ground, uh, how important is airspeed when it comes to uh, the role carried out by these aircraft? I, I don't think it's all that a point important other than getting from point A to point B, uh, other than getting from point A to point B in a fast manner. Uh, maneuverability. Uh, the IL-10M is superior to the ME-329, whereas the IL-20 is, uh, is not as maneuverable as the ME-329. And you see that here in the time to turn 360 degrees, where the IL-10M is, is going to win that turning battle by three plus seconds, whereas the IL-20 is going to lose that battle by three plus seconds. Again, you know, given the role of these aircraft, I really don't think that's a, too much of a significant issue. Um, stall speed. Uh, this is important because one of the things that's critical in a, a ground attack aircraft is being able to go slow enough to, to take out the ground target. And sometimes that takes, you know, pounding it a little bit. Um, and so, you know, you're often flirting with the stall speed of the aircraft. And as you can see here, um, both the IL-10N and the IL-20 uh, will stall significantly later than the ME-329. Uh, optimum altitude, again, not, not that important. Um, the ME-329 prevails in that area, but, you know, look, you're, you're attacking ground targets. Uh, it's really uh, not that big of an issue, the altitude. Um, again, rate of climb, not that big of an issue, but IL-10M uh, is better in terms of rate of climb than the ME-329, whereas the IL-20 is significantly uh, outclassed in rate of climb by the ME-329. So again here, the conclusion I can't help but reach is that the IL-20 is superior in most respects. Now one thing um, that we do want to take a look at here uh, are the rear gun armaments. Because many times the survivability of these aircraft depend upon their rear, rear guns. Now, you know, looking at the uh, IL-10M, uh, it does have a rear gun. It is a 20 millimeter, uh, and it is not as powerful uh, as the rear gun on the ME-329. It does 120 damage per second, uh, which, as compared to the 144 damage per second done by the uh, rear turret of the ME-329, its effective firing range is also 100 meters less than that of the ME-329. Uh, and it's just down the line that the turret on the ME-329 is clearly superior to the turret on the IL-10M. Looking at the turret that is on the uh, IL-20, it has a 23 millimeter uh, turret. And this, folks, this doesn't surprise me at all. 
um, because having been behind an IL-20 on many occasions in a, in a fighter trying to take it out, um, it, the rear turret can be vicious on that aircraft. Um, again, 192 damage per second for the turret on the IL-20 versus just 144 on the ME-329. Effective firing range, 900 meters, which is the same as the ME-329. Um, the field of fire is not as robust. It's uh, 20 less than the ME-329s. Uh, does have the same gun elevation. Um, the gun depression is better on the ME-329. But again, we get back to the damage per second. Um, but field of fire can be important as well. Um, 60 meters for the ME-329 versus 40 meters on the um, IL-20 can, can be significant. So once again, you know, between these three aircraft, if I had to choose what ground attack aircraft I would be flying at Tier 8, I would have to say it's the IL-20, hands down, over the ME-329, or the IL-10M for that matter. So I hope that uh, helps you put these aircraft in context and helps you make some decisions as to uh, what craft aircraft you want to grind for. So having uh, reviewed my build for this uh, aircraft, um, having gone over the ME329 specifications, and having compared it to other Tier 8 attack aircraft, Let's head into a battle here and see how it does. So we have drawn the Northern Bridgehead Birds of Prey Theater of Operation. We will be headed over to the uh, mining plant first, and then we will move around the mountains over this way, trying to stay out of sight and hit their garrison, kind of flanking in a flanking move. Uh, from there we'll see how things go. We might move to the air base. Um, Attention. You are entering the combat we'll zone. just have to Get ready for battle. see where things are at that point. You are approaching the front All right. line. And we have a 45 second engine boost so we're gonna use that to head on over to this plant. Get that secured for our team hopefully. So we should be able to take out um, two ground targets with our bombs and then we will go to work with our uh, cannons which are great on ground targets. They kind of suck against aerial targets but that's okay. We're going to save our bombs for some of the bigger targets. this on the plant here. Drop both on the plant. Still have some work to do on the plant, but... Well, we've set these targets on fire, so hopefully uh, the fire will take them out after we've moved on. We're getting there. Two more, uh, looks like 
stacks here to get on the uh, plant. There we go. Yeah, maybe we can take out one of these. Make sure we don't crash into the... Have our bombs back, so we'll take out that gun emplacement. And that does it. There we go. Alright, so we're going to head on over to there. Actually, we have a ground attack aircraft coming in. Looks like a human player. I don't want to collide with them, so we'll flip over here and work on them. And I got taken out by an ME-329 though. So they're going to try to take the uh, plant back from us and we're going to head over there and see if we can't stop them. And we'll call for a little assistance here and see if anyone from the team can come and help us. And they've got two ground attack aircraft there, so... Let's see, what do we have here? There's an ME-329, and he's kind of low health, so we'll see. Took him out, although put a dent in us. There we go. We barely lived, but we got the job done. Okay, so we're going to head over these hills here and head to their garrison. See if we can't take it. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of health, and we only have one bomb right now. So we're just going to have to do our best here. Come in low here. Let's take this one out first. We'll have to rely upon the fire to get the rest of that. And we're going to come over here and drop our bomb. We'll drop it on this uh, housing facility here. And what we're going to do then is going to flip around here and try to take out these buildings. Kind of low hanging fruit here. Maybe we can get this plane too while we're at it. Got a f kind of flirting with the stall there, but I think we can get this plane. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to crash, that way we can get our health back before we end up uh, unable to come back because of the squall line. And what we'll do now is we will head over to their uh, plant and see if we can't take that from them. 
a heavy storm here. Unable to proceed. Return into base. Do you copy? Okay, so we're gonna head over to their plant. Or not the plant, but um Actually, yeah, the plant. Along the way, we'll check out this garrison and see why it hasn't fallen into our hands yet. I don't know if there's something we could do to finish it off there. Looks like all the emplacements and ground targets are in our possession, so I'm, I don't know what more we can do there. So we'll head over to the plant and we're just staying low so that we don't attract attention unless we absolutely have to. And we may found, let's see, we, we've got uh, some friendlies over here. So we'll help give them a hand. All right, so there you go. Um, victory, yay. And let's see, effective fire. Subjugator, number one rank on the team. And let's head back into the hangar and check out the after action report. All right, so um, three aerial targets destroyed. Uh, now we were only in battle for uh, about a minute and a, excuse me, eight and a half minutes. So, um, and in that time, we destroyed three aerial targets, three ground targets, did over thirty-two thousand in damage to ground targets. Um, got the Avenger accolade for. Destroying that one aircraft that had first destroyed us. And, you know, one of the big keys there was, you know, we had our garrison over there that was being, uh, you know, sliced and diced by those two ground attack aircraft. And we took them both uh, on head on and uh, knocked them both out and saved the garrison over there. So I think that was an important component. Um, to the win, and then we went and, of course, took the other uh, garrison. So over uh, 6,000 in uh, combat points there. Um, these were the uh, two ME-329s on the other team. Both of them were uh, ground attack aircraft. So um, very rewarding match uh, and, and shows you know, the capabilities of the ME-329, I think. And it's just, you know, a really cool-looking aircraft. Kind of like a boomerang, almost. All right, so the ME-329, folks. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And uh, I think that if you get an opportunity to uh, take the ME-329 out for a spin, that you'll have uh, great success and a lot of fun.